Across the country, there are literally hundreds of thousands of people living in homes affected by defects, whether it's mica, whether it's pyrite, whether it's fire and other latent defects, hundreds of thousands of people. Um, and now, given the campaigning and the pressure from below, it's clear that the government is forced to concede redress schemes, for example, for those affected by MICA. It's still an inadequate redress uh, scheme. It says 100% on the top line, but in reality, in the small print, it's something like 80%. And the MICA families aren't giving up on that. They're going to continue to fight. Um, the question of another major redress scheme uh, worth between 1.5 and I'd say more likely the higher end of 2.5 billion for uh, apartment and duplex deflects is going to come on the uh, agenda. And the question is, is now posed, obviously, who, who pays for these things? Um, and the government's answer basically is that ordinary people will pay, that we won't make those who are responsible pay. So. On the one hand, with this uh, levy, which new homeowners will pay, and on uh, the other hand, because the, the, the levy by itself is completely inadequate, uh, so on the other hand, then just the public in general will pay uh, in terms of public funding, extra taxation, uh, etc. And there's a continuous line from the very origin of this problem to the situation of how we deal with it and how we pay for it. And that continuous line, continuous feature all the way along is the absolute, you know, consistent position of Fianna Fáil and Fine Gael to represent the developers and represent the builders. That's who you represent. That's whose interests you've represented in this all the way along. And it's why we have hundreds of thousands of people in this crisis, because we've had the builders parties uh, in uh, power. Um, I want to go back all the way to the 29th of November 1989. Uh, my attention was drawn to it by um, its it, it reference in Deputy O'Brien's book, Defects. And it's, it's a very revealing debate about the Building Control Bill 1984. And what it reveals is that all of this was warned about. All those decades ago, it was all warned about. Government at the time, Fianna Fáil government, knew about it um, and shrugged its shoulders and said, should there be no problem with the builders? So a quote from Eamon, Deputy Eamon Gilmore, who was then the spokesperson for the Workers' Party. He, he said, it is quite clear that the intention in this section of the bill is to introduce a system of self-certification, which will be the primary instrument used to give effect to building control. It's a little misleading to suggest that the provision for self-certification is some kind of an adjunct to the general provisions of the bill and which can be exercised from time to time. It has been made crystal clear, this is my reading of the debate which took place before the adjournment of the Dáil, that the central method by which it is attended building control will be exercised under this bill is through the system of self-certification. In other words, a competent professional or whoever has designed a house, is responsible for the building of it and so on, would also be the person who would be able to say, this building is fine. That principle is not acceptable in commercial life. Uh, if it was accepted in commercial life, why do building societies, uh, when they're approving a loan for someone, decide they will not automatically accept the word of, of the professional represented the people? It goes on, the principle being enshrined in this section is very dangerous. It will expose people who are buying homes to buying products which are substandard against which they will have no comeback. Under a later section of this bill, once a local authority take in a certificate of compliance and file it away, one cannot take any action against them. These people will have no worthwhile comeback if a certificate of compliance does not properly ensure that a building meets the required standards. Warned, predicted, all of what has come to transpire. And the minister at the time who was Fianna Fáil Minister Podrick Flynn, said, I cannot for the life of me understand the deputy's preoccupation with rogue builders, certifiers and architects. Deputy Gilmore responded, I come across a lot of them. And Dep Minister Flynn said, if Deputy Gilmore buys a building without having put in place some checks, then he is the one who is being negligent in protecting 
his own investment. So the government was warned at the time, the Fianna Fáil government, your party minister, about all of this, about everything that would transpire as a consequence, and they said it's people's fault. Even though it's not people's fault, how could they possibly have known? If you buy a house uh, with mica, you couldn't possibly have known. You buy a house with fire defects, you couldn't possibly uh, have known. You buy a house uh, with pyrite, you couldn't possibly uh, have known. But what is consistent from 1989 to now is representing the interests of the builders and the developers. And that's what's happening here. So that the 10% defective concrete products levy should be scrapped because it's absolutely clear that the cost will simply be passed on to ordinary people and make already unaffordable housing even more expensive. It's been referenced how the Society of Chartered Surveyors Ireland has forecast that it could add three to four thousand euros to the cost of an average three bed semi-detached uh, house. So it's, it's a scheme that's been carefully designed to place no financial burden on developers and builders, but effectively merely makes them a collectors of a levy on ordinary people in need of a home. It's yet another demonstration we've had over all these decades of the toxic relationship between the developers and builders on the one hand, and Fianna Fáil and Fine Gael as their political parties on the other hand. Um, instead, uh, yes, we need to pay for this, absolutely, that's uh, agreed. Um, I saw the minister was on TV, I think it was last night, saying, can you show me a way that this levy isn't going to be passed on? So, like, I agree, this levy is going to be passed on. The, the way that you design a levy that can't be passed on is you go after the profits. The profits of the developer and construction industry, profits of the banking sector, uh, and so on. You hit them at the point of profits. Many of them are highly profitable, and we need a levy on their large uh, profits. In, in Britain, in, uh, post Grenfell, there has been such a levy introduced, and it's entirely possible to do it here if the political will uh, exists and if the builders, developers weren't being protected. I also would make the point that I, I don't accept that we can't go, uh, go after those who are directly responsible, directly guilty for the consequences, for the defects that we're seeing now. In, in relation to the apartment and duplex defects, some of the companies still exist. In many, many other cases, the same people still exist. They're, same, they're still building uh, apartments and duplexes, but they've simply uh, reinvented uh, themselves. The same people who made massive profits still active in the industry, some of them still getting new public uh, contracts. We should go after them. I want to finish by making the, the point about the uh, report on the defective apartments and duplexes. It's now more than two months since the government received the report from the working group to examine defects in housing. That report is very clear about the massive extent of defects, primarily fire defects in apartments and duplexes. And I do want to say to people that if you are living in an apartment or a duplex built between 1991 and 2013, the chances are you're affected. The chances are you're going to be faced, you don't know it yet, but you're going to be faced with a bill of an average of €25,000, more likely, uh, in many cases, it'll be significantly higher than that. So the working group estimates that of apartments and duplexes constructed between 1991 and 2013, the number that may be affected by one or more defects, i.e. fire safety, structural safety or water ingress defects, is likely to range between 50 and 80% which equates to between 62,500 and 100,000 apartments or duplexes. That's one in 20 homes in the state, 5% affected. It's an absolutely immense issue that most people who are affected don't know that they're uh, affected yet. Um, and to go back to the point that Minister Flynn, Padraig Flynn was saying at the time, it'll be your fault. This is absolutely not people's fault. They did everything they were supposed to do when their homes were built and when they bought their homes and they're faced with massive bills to make their homes safe. On budget day last week, the Minister for Housing brought a memorandum to Cabinet about the issue of defective apartments. But all he did was to announce the establishment of a new group, a group to look into the report from the last uh, group and to report back before the end of uh, the year. We don't need months more of deliberation and so on. We have the report of the working group. It's clear on the extent of the problem. It, it also includes, as one of the possible solutions, the only solution that will work, in my opinion, which is 100% uh, redress. So we, we know what 
the issue is, we know what the solution is, and you, you cannot expect apartment and duplex owners to simply wait, to wait more months as this kick down the road before some scheme is put into place that then takes months or potentially years to actually be implemented. The government should be moving on it now. It should have included redress in last week's uh, budget, and it should move on it immediately now. Thanks, everybody.